Okay, we should be going live here in, in like five seconds. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll just intro you and, and we'll start talking. All right, good morning, everyone. Tim Watson here with uh, Master Dennis DeMarco. Um, it's our series of Meet the Master, and I'm really excited to have Master DeMarco. I, I remember for years of going to tournaments and stuff, I would see all of the masters when they would do uh, judging and things like that uh, for many years. And I, I still remember you, Master DeMarco, one of the first masters that came up to me and, and um, compliment, kind of complimented me on, you know, whether it was sparring or, or forms. And it, it always meant a lot to me that you took the time to uh, come up and uh, say something to me and, and give me a, a, a word of encouragement. So I really appreciate that. And, and again, I want to thank you for, for joining me this morning. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and, and we'll get started with, you know, share with us how, how you got started on your martial arts journey, when that was and, and you know, where, where it took you, you know, whenever you started. Okay. All right. I started, uh, well, the reason why I took martial arts was that I was with my girlfriend in high school and also a gang of uh, guys were harassing her and I'm there. I was, it just froze. And like, like, you know, trying to be, uh, you know, and plus if I would have done something, they would, you know, there was a, there was a lot of them. And so uh, I've always remembered that in my head, like I was just so like, what can I do? And so when I graduated from high school in 1971, I went to Delaware County Community College and uh, there was a karate class there. And it was, uh, is, uh, so it was Tracy's Karate it was called in that, in that, at that time in the seventies. And uh, so I joined there, it was, it was a club. And my the first instructor was uh, Greg Gibbons. He was my first instructor. and. Uh, it's, it was really, really neat. It was, uh, the, I don't know, Chinese Kempo is a multiple striking system. And so as I took that since 1971, and then approximately 1972, uh, they asked me if I want to teach for them. So that the owner of the place was uh, Jack Morris. And uh, he lived in, his school was in Holmes, Pennsylvania, right on, on uh, off of McDay Boulevard, or right on McDay Boulevard. And uh, from there, I, uh, you know, I was teaching for them. And then some, something really happened, uh, something bad happened in the Paoli, the Tracy's uh, Karate in Paoli. So they asked me to uh, teach up there. So I did. And then after a while, you know, that's uh, with the Tracy sending to Kempo, I sort of like lost interest because there's a lot of things going on. And so in 1973, uh, me and my, my friend at the time, I've known him since fifth grade, Mr. Larry Durkall, we heard about this school that this a Korean person was there, you know, uh, and he heard like, they had the demonstrations there. And so we decided to come up and uh, look at it. And uh, then we decided to join. And the neat part was uh, Master Durkle's uh, class number for, uh, was, uh, oh, excuse me, let me, uh, just, okay, we went to Kwan's Karate, it was Kwan's Karate. It, uh, my instructor's name was Young Hyuk Kwan. Okay, so me and Master Durkle, we decided to join. So we went up there and signed all everything. And uh, Master Durkle's uh, student number was number 48 there at the school and mine was number 49. And uh, from there, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty good. You know, it was a little different than Kempo because it was like very, a lot harder because a lot of stretching. And uh, so, and that's how I started anyway, <laughs> so. Okay, um, and so you, you stayed with the Quans. How long were you uh, with the Quans as far as? Uh, uh, we, uh, we stayed with the Quans for a while, a long, you know, I stayed there for a really long time. And uh, then young Kyuk Kwan decided to leave and go, first he went to Arizona and then he went to uh, California, I guess to get schools there. So then from there, we, uh, he took, led his brother, young Kuk Kwan, he was teaching us and everything. And, then I think okay, where when it was probably like 1977 or 78, Master Durkle, he just you know he was really infatuated with a young Kyuk Kwan, really because he was the technician was unbelievable. He really was really good as a technician. So he went and he moved to California to see uh, you know young Kyuk Kwan, and so he was teaching for young Kyuk Kwan. I think it was in Chula Vista, 
well, well that's where Master Durko lives now. And uh, so, but we, I stayed with him for a while. Then a lot of political stuff happened. And uh, then Master Castrana had a school and I asked to be transferred from the Quan school to uh, Master Castrana school. I wrote a letter to great, great Master Shin and he said, okay, you know, to do it. So, and that's, I forget, that was probably like in 19, probably like 80, 85, something like that. I'm not, I don't know about the dates. I really forget the dates. <laughs> that's fine. So when did, when did Master Casarano come? He, you guys trained together for a good while. Did he train with the Quans as well? Or where did he train? Oh yeah, this, I, yeah I have some, I have some pictures, but it's really neat. Master Casarano, when I first met Master Casarano, he was in children's class. And, uh, you know, it's really, you know, so I didn't really know him that much. And, you know, then he decided, then he all of a sudden, I guess he was old enough to go to the adult class, but he was in children's class. And I have this picture. I don't know if anyone, I think you see it or not. It's a 1973 picture. Okay. And from here, believe it or not, there's Mr. Casarano right there. So it's really, really, you know, it's funny. And um, there's young Kyo Kwan right here. That was my instructor. And there's Grandmaster Shin right here. And there's young Ku Kwan right here. So, and uh, so I, you know, I just want, this is like a 1973 pictures, really. It's pretty neat, <laughs> so. That's pretty cool. Um, can, can you describe, what was the feeling back then uh, in the seventies as far as Tung Sudo, like were, were schools kind of insulated to themselves or did you have any interaction with other Dojangs, like the Grandmaster Shin come around. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, well, when we were with the, the Quans, it was very, very strict, okay? It was, uh, what we did, like just, when we go to class, we would, you know, of course, go in there, we had the bow, he was always in the office before class starts. We bow, then we got changed. And then, when, after we went to the training area, the Dojang, you know, where you train, the mats, wherever, the rugs, he had just had a rug with the, Cement, cement underneath it. Uh, we would have to, all of a sudden, just like when we bow in, everyone bows in together, we had to do it individually. Okay, so we bowed in, we, uh, we onjoed like, you know, and all that stuff, and we, we try to get our minds clean that, you know, what we're gonna learn, what we're gonna try to improve on. And after we finished that, we weren't allowed to talk at all. We weren't, he'd been in the office and we hear someone talking to each other, he'll come out and just look at you. And so what we had to do, we had to be 15 minutes before class started. And class is usually an hour and a half, two hours long. Class, you know, 15 minutes after class, and we had to practice what we were taught the day before, or at least the forms. So there was no talking, no socializing at all in the class when you had your dobok on. And uh, it was really, really, you know, to me, that's the way I was taught. So like every time, you know, you just, we just don't talk. And that's why I was brought up, that's why I was programmed do that, you know, just be quiet, no matter what. And, uh, and the thing was really neat was with the point, but like, you know, t today, I don't know if it will be accepted or not, but when we, uh, like when we uh, also, we were doing the basics going up and down. And if you thought that we weren't given a hundred percent or we uh, had an attitude problem or disrespecting somebody or not even, you know, giving hundred percent, this is, I'm not, this is really funny, but it's the truth. You could ask Master Durko too. All of a sudden he would stop the class and he'd make us go in two knuckle push-ups in that position and he'd get a stick right in front of everybody and start hitting us in the back of our legs where the hamstrings are. And just trying to tell us, you know, you got to improve, you got to improve. And that's what happened. And it's like, you know, you're embarrassed, but everyone, you know, they did it. And we accepted that. That's really, really strange. And, and it probably uh, never happened again. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it was neat. I mean, you know, that's where I know it's terrible saying program. I, I was programmed that way all the time. So I always, I always, you know, I don't talk much, that much anyway. And, uh, and one thing also what was really neat when we're sparring, you know, and he always watches us spar, you know, and, and if he feels we're not doing 100% effort in our sparring, he would stop the class and he would spar with us. Wow. And he would all, then he would just go, you know, like, come on, come on, like, you know, try to hit him. And like, you're really afraid of him. I mean, I was really afraid of him. He had like log legs. I mean, he really was really, you know, and if you didn't try to attack him, he would come and attack you. And that's then, so I guess that makes us want to do hundred percent, whatever we did, always hundred percent effort, you know, and there's no socializing at all. 
everything when we had a dough box one was all about Tang Sudo, Mutaquan, well, at the time of Mutaquan. Right. So, which is really, really neat. So, and what else? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, spar oh, and also with sparring, when we sparred, it wasn't, we didn't have to wear sparring gear. And one thing I really emphasize, tell people, like, it's really weird. When we didn't wear sparring gear, you know, you had to have control, especially like I would spar somebody, I would never do a front kick because without the sparring gear or whatever, they would kill the block and hit my shins and that hurt so much. So even when you're doing something, when you're attacking a person, you don't want to hit, hurt them or whatever. So you had to have control. When you have sparring gear, well, I know you have to have it now. If there's, you know, you, you don't really have to have that much control because the pads will help, help uh, you know, protect the person, your opponent and yourself. So that's a little different when training with the, you know, uh, Agua Kwan. So. Yeah, that's a good point. There's few things that hurt worse than a, like an elbow to the shin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's one thing I used to do when a lot of people really, I mean, it's terrible saying this, but it's you know, what I do because a lot, they were very, they try to hurt you. Everyone did. And uh, every time I would block, I would block with my elbows. Like if someone's like trying to hit me in the face real hard, I would just sort of go like that, block up like that all the time. And they won't hit me in the face anymore. So like, you know, but I don't know if that's on sports and like or what, but I'm protecting myself. <laughs> so, so that's what I did. Absolutely. So, it's better. It's better your elbow than the side of your head. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Um, can you talk about as, as you went through the, the years, um, obviously, there were talks about doing one Tung Sudo Association and then eventually it became the World Tung Sudo Association. What, what degree, were you a black belt at that point? And could you, and could you talk about like how you felt about that time? Was it excitement? Were you, were you nervous? Uh, with the, uh, well, I, I, I got my black belt in 1977. So I was a black okay. belt. And uh, there was a lot of political stuff, which it's pretty, you know, uh, Fra uh, fragile to talk about. I'd really rather not really talk about the situation, but it was really, really bad. It was, it really was, you know, and uh, we, we stuck to, uh, took, you know, we stuck together, me, Mr. Castrano, Mr. Vittori, Mr. Minnelli, and myself. We stuck to get, you know, stuck together, and that's how we, you know, everything was good, but it was like, it was just pretty bad. <laughs> so, and uh, that's it, so. Well, that, so actually you brought up those two names uh, and I, I obviously know that they both train with the Quans, but um, could you talk about, you know, being able to, to, to work with Master Tori and Master Manelli? Obviously Master Manelli was doing the Tung Sudo, but he was also involved in Judo and- Yes, and so. no, it was really nice. It was, uh, we, we uh, became like really, as I said, we were really close and we known each other for over 40 years. So it was nice, you know, and things happen, you know, Mr. Castrano and stuff. And, uh, but it was real, real nice. It really was neat. You know, we, we protected each other. And one thing with Mr. Castrano, when I ever had problems with the headquarters in South Philly, he would go there. He would protect me all the time. It was, that's one thing I really admired about him. He would always help, you know, help me, you know, stuff like that. So it was nice, real nice. So, and uh, uh, we would, uh, Grandmaster Shin, he was, uh, he was, he was great. With the, when, with the gup test, when we had our gup test with the, you know, uh, with the uh, Quans, Grandmaster Shin, he was at my orange belt test. He was at our gup test because Grandmaster Shin and the Quan's father were good friends. And so, you know, every, everything we did, you know, he was there. And it was, you know, it was really like we were spoiled from, because you know, I saw him all the time. And, uh, this is one, one thing is really neat about Grandmaster Shin. Like I would, he would talk, I would talk to him and it's like personal stuff. Like in, in 1996, I had really personal, personal business. Like was really you know, bad for me. And one thing is really important that he, and I always remember what he said to me, cause I'm talking like, you know, face to face at his desk. And I was, he goes to me, Dennis, gather up all your negativity, analyze it, then walk away. And I always remember Grandmaster Shin said that to me. And it was just, you know, so, that was real, real neat. I really, I really, you know, really liked that, you know, and I always remember that. So he was good. He was a really good friend and, you know, great, great master. So. Yeah. From, from all the interviews that I have conducted so far, 
it just seems like he always had the right thing to say. He always knew the right thing to say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, he was fun. He was funny, too. He really was. And, you know, and then he was serious, too. So, you know, it's really neat. And uh, so it was nice. You had to do 100% with him there, especially the classes, instructor's class in South Philadelphia. You know, he would always be upstairs in his office. And then sometimes we'd come down when we had the classes and everything and teach. So it was really, real nice. So... Could you uh, could you share with us some memories from the the charter convention? Yes. Okay. I, this uh, the charter convention. I, I have. I actually have. I can't believe I have this. Uh, the charter convention. I guess it was nineteen eighty uh, two, and it was at the airport Hilton. And I think with that convention, we did the. We were switching from oh, we were from Mutaquan to World Tang Sudo, so I'm pretty sure. At that in 1982, we decided to uh, change our belt uh, colors, color belts. And one thing I just want, I just want to tell you too, when we had, when we were with Mutaquan, I wrote this down because I have my certificates from uh, Mutaquan, you know, all the way up to black belt. Well, I even had the black belt showdown. But 10th gup was white, 9th gup was white with a stripe, that's normal. 8th uh, gup was orange, 7th gup was orange with a stripe, 6th gup was green. Uh, fifth gut was green with one stripe. Uh, fourth gut was green with two stripes. Third gut was red. Uh, second gut was red with one stripe. First gut was red with two stripes. And Chodenbo was red with two, uh, with two stripes or two black stripes and one, uh, two white stripes, one black stripe was red. That was our Chodenbo. So all of uh, those stripes were from green, well, from you know, orange, they're all white. The, you know, so the ninth cup was uh, white with the stripe was black. So it's same, same thing with now, but you know, it was, there was never any brown belt. And the showdown belt was, it was really, it was weird because it was like, you know, red belt with two white stripes and one black stripe. That was our showdown belt. Then they switched it. <laughs> so it was nice. It was really nice. I'm pretty sure it was then, but I'm not, I, I'm not definitely. But then we had the. I think you're right. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, last week, uh, Master Vaughn did an interview with Master Setianto. And he uh -huh. brought up the belts and he said he felt like you were a red belt for forever. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's definite. <laughs> and so it's funny, you know, you, you were red belt for what force, oh. you know, a solid red and then you had many, many stripes. So I, like I said, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because he said something about that. So um, <laughs> there, there, yeah, there's your proof. <laughs> yeah. And it was really neat. I, uh, what Grandmaster, uh, not Grandmaster, excuse me, uh, Quan used to tell us, he's really afraid that, uh, well, he's very more cautious about sparring a red belt than any other belt because they're they're hungry for that sure. black belt, so they'll they're really aggressive and more, you know, you know, then you know, so it's real real nice. That he, I'm glad he told, you know, he said that, you know, his opinion, personal opinion, which is nice. And I always remember that. So, okay, and also. Uh, I have this, uh, I had this long, long time ago. Okay, in 1983, we had the World Convention and that was the airport Hilton. And we learned the bong forms, bong hyungs. Okay, and that, so we, that's what we did at that, that World Convention and that like everything from the world came and it was really neat. And I think that's when uh, there, or, or I forget, about 19, uh, 1980, 85, yeah, 85, let me see, sorry. To, yeah, 1985 was the World Convention, and that's when we started the Dangam Hyung. It was, you know, that was the form, the knife form. And with that form, I actually bought a, a video camera, and uh, I didn't know how to use it, but I, you know, I think everyone has it. I, well, I gave it to uh, headquarters, like the what I video I did, and a lot of times there was no talking because I had no idea what I was doing. But I, I, at least I have a, a history of it, you know, that was happening. And it was, you know, it was pretty neat, really nice. So you see, yes, you, you shared that video with me, and it was it was really cool to see. Uh, I believe I, I remember Master Dirkol uh, doing one of his, whether it was a form or he was just doing staff work um, in that video, and he, it was just it was fantastic to see. Yeah, that was really neat, especially with the, uh, you know, him and the Master God when we were talking about it and doing. They were like, I I always said that my you know my my oh this is West Coast and East Coast doing the, the bond form. That's what I, you know, that's what I said, you know, myself anyway. So, so that was it for the world convention. And that was the knife form in 
And that's, it was really nice because that was like uh, the internet, almost like the master's clinic, you know, it's, so it was real and I've seen people and, you know, you know, people that like when Master Durko left to California, you know, I would really rarely saw him until we had the conventions. And then when we had the, you know, the master's clinic, we, you know, it was really nice to see him because I known him since fifth grade. So it was nice. Yeah. Awesome. Um, going, just going back real quick to the, the charter convention. Um, looking at the list of names, there, there are not a lot of people that are, are left, whether they left the association or they're no longer with us. Um, I know in Region 8 alone, it's yourself, Master Tori, Master Manelli, uh, Master Britt, Master Chambliss, mm -hmm. uh, Dudley Snyder, Master Godwin. Um, Trying to think if there's any anyone else I'm um, um, forgetting yeah, here, yeah. but I know. I know there's a lot, a lot of, not a lot of names left. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, we're getting old. <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> so, but hey, that's 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 what goes on. <laughs> that's just life. Right, so. but you know, at, at the same point, you're you know you're still in your doba, you're still spreading the art. Um, you know, you you, you get yeah. old if you stop moving. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's really good. It's really, real neat. And uh, I, I, the one thing with the well, martial arts tanks, you know, you know, world tanks, though, to me is, I don't know what it'd be if I didn't have it because I met so many people all around the world, and you know, it was just so nice. And really, you know, this I could go any really any place, and uh, I just, you know, I really, and you know, like the people are really warm-hearted, like you know, stuff like that. Without, you know, it was really, real nice. And, uh, you know, I just, I did, you know, I love like, I, you know, go different places. I went to, you know, Alaska and I always there with Master Wick, you know, me and him became really good friends. And also we come up there, I would go up there and everything like that. Then he had his, uh, you know, then he, you know, he's not, not here anymore and everything. So I, I vowed for his students that I would come up there every year. And I've been doing that except for this year. I would I didn't anticipate go this year, but I guess you can't go. So. But it was really, really nice. It's so, so nice going there. And that's, you know, he was a really, well, everyone knew him. He's a great guy. So, so. Yeah, when I, when I was doing some research and, and looking at Facebook and some different things, I, I saw quite a few pictures with him. And then I saw your, your many trips to Alaska. Um, and then that was something I, I didn't really know about. Um, but that's, that's really cool. When when was your when was the first time you went to Masters Clinic? What year was that? Uh, probably in uh, I think probably nineteen ninety two, okay. because I was at San Antonio, Florida, at that uh, right. I was at the, that place where the, the lake 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 house with uh, right. Morgan Becker was the he was at the time he was you know the instructor there and he was at the World Tank so. Yeah, nineteen because I got my uh, Masters belt in nineteen ninety three. So, and it was, you know, it was real, real nice there. It was, uh, it was different because they had the monks making food and I'm a very fussy eater and they didn't believe in uh, killing anything. <laughs> so it was like, Ugh. so, but it was, you know, it was, it was really, it was different, very different because they always tell me that there's an alligator in the lake and it, it, sometimes he it comes up and everything. And it was funny because when we were taking pictures, group pictures, uh, you sit there on the ground and there's fire ants. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, they go in, the, you know, they'll, they'll burn you a little bit, you know, bite you or whatever. So, but it was, it was really nice. It was very unique. I was so nervous being there because it was just, it was almost like TV because the monk went to the monk for taking her test, you know, like a, it was a beautiful place. It really was. I remember, so. Was there, do you remember anyone who was with you like that year for the first year together? Uh, yeah, we, uh, I was, uh, Uh, Gary Josephix, he was with me. Okay. We were talking a lot and everything. And, uh, you know, he was, yeah, he was, you no, know, we were talking because uh, we were taking his test at the same time and everything. And, uh, you know, it was pretty neat. It was, you know, trying to get someone to, you know, because I, I, it was so, it was like a different world because everyone's like, you know, real strict in a way. And, uh, you know, I'm very, <laughs> you didn't know what to say, what to do and everything. And, uh, but, you know, it was, it was nice. Then, like, uh, a lot, a lot of other things happened, but uh, it was really weird with the, taking the test, the, the you know the test, the the master's test, because I'm like everyone's like you know you go you want to do 100 percent all times, and uh, when I took the test, my adrenaline was going. Oh, I was so gun ho. 
Then after like 15, 20 minutes, I was beat. I was tired. So I had to adjust myself, you know, like pace myself a little better, you know, and then, you know, I, I passed, you know, and stuff like that. But it was, uh, it was really weird because I, I, you know, the, the, what the book at the written test, I guess I didn't know the history that much or the terminology because I supposedly, I mean, I failed, you know, the, the, the written test and a lot of people fail too. So, but, uh, you know, so I don't know, you know, what, but I did, I thought I was studied. I thought I did pretty good, but that's what they said, you know, and I believe them, but you know, the, the written, t the, the physical test, I didn't, I thought I did all right. So, so that's it with the, I feel like everyone has that same story. I remember it may have been Master Romitis talking about they train you the whole weekend to where when you get to the test that you're you're basically taking the test on spirit because you're so tired at that point and that you you uh, know you, you it, it's a mental game. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. It was like it was and the thing was like the whole. I mean that was something to yeah. I forgot about that. It was like especially on Saturday, we'd have the tests. We would all Saturday in the daytime, in the morning, in the afternoon, we would do all the physical stuff, all the different, you know, reviews and tire your, your dough box all sweaty. And then around 10 o'clock at night, you would take your, the master's test and you're still you're mentally, you know, like, uh, you're a little tired physically. You're definitely tired, but mentally, oh, you know, I guess they, they figure like the indomitable spirit. See if you have enough spirit. So that's what they did then. And so it was a pretty neat. So, we got a couple of people saying hi. Miss uh, Tom Lyons says good morning. I, I see Master Falchnot is watching. I know uh, you guys you crossed paths in Alaska last year, right? Were you together? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. That was no, yeah. They did a really great job. Uh, you know, they did their the, the rope, whatever you know, uh, the rope, whatever, whatever they did self defense. They were really good. Yes. That's real, real good. So, yeah. So hi to Tom and <laughs> the Falchnots. Yeah. So. Yeah, Tom, Tom has a question. Um, he's, he says, I know you and Master Kazarana were really close. What is the most important thing that he taught you? Or if there's something that you remember that he taught you? He, he taught me a lot. He told me not, you know, don't, you know, it's, don't take, take some, don't, <laughs> don't take any crap off people in a way, you know, but you know, there's a way he's a, like what, he went to a wider university and he took, you know, part of it, took psychology and stuff like that. And the, you know, it was pretty neat. Is uh, he? But he always helped me out. I was. He would always talk to me, and you know, that's one thing I just remember. He would always help me, and we were. It's neat because we. Uh, I'm actually uh, his son's godfather, which is really neat. I, I, I you know, I've all completely forgot about that until Mark's mom, Ina, told me. Don't you remember you're his godfather? You know, it's like that's a long time now. You know, Mark's uh, son's. Well, he was in the Marines, and now he's. You know, he's out and stuff like that. He's like in his thirties. So, but that thing, Master Castrano was, it was really, real good. He helped me out and, and it's neat because both of our birthdays are May 5th. So it was, it was really weird that, you know, both, you know, it was neat. And then I, uh, with Master Castrano, I, uh, I moved, I, I was four or five houses. Well, I think there four houses from his house. We live in Westmont in the Collingdale. And so I bought the house, you know, in Collingdale. So we hung out together to walk, walk, you know, walk five houses, four houses and, you know, go to his house. You come to my house. You know, it was, it was really fun. We talked a lot about a lot of things and a lot of, he, he helped me with the tanks to too, with the world tanks to And, you know, that's why I said before when someone sort of, I got some, you know, like they didn't really, I, you know, that, you know, whatever, uh, he would help me out. So he would just, he would defend me. So, um, this is probably three or four years ago at the black belt, te uh, black belt camp. Uh, they showed a video, I think of master Cosarano's grand opening. Mm -hmm. And, um, there was a video of you and him and I believe master Tori and quite a few others. Um, and just the, the fit, the technical ability that, that you showed and master Cosarano showed and master Tori, I think was it master Marvel may have been in there as yes. well. Yeah, Lewis um, Marvel, yes, Mr. Marvel. It was, was just amazing. Maybe talk about, you, you said you transferred to Master Casarano's school um, back then. Just talk about the, the training, training with him and, and training in, that, in his dojang um, back then. Okay. Yeah, it, Master, like, it was like, it was a, that's another sort of political thing in a way. Master Casarano, uh, 
with a situation. He was, he got susp suspended for a year out of the World Tank Sudo for reasons that, well, it's, it was sort of like because when other people were splitting from World Tank Sudo and Mr. Castrano was there teaching for the person for school. And then Mr. Castrano had a school right down the hallway and all this stuff and, uh, and they didn't like that. And so he was suspended for a year. And the grand opening was after a year, you know, was a grand opening. It was, a, you know, but he was teaching out, you know, he was the teaching world tanks to that world tanks to that. But I guess in a way he wasn't supposed to, because well, we were, well, that happened when Mr. Costner was teaching, I mean, was a suspended. We had a train in South Philadelphia, at, you know, Shins Karate. And that's when we did that. And then Mark still had, Mr. Costner still had the school. And, uh, you know, that, and, uh, well, for Mr. Costner was the same thing we got with the Quans. It's like, like you're, you, 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 you train his, uh, when he's teaching, you're out of breath. You just, your, your uniform, your dough box is wet. I mean, it's like soaked all the time. And at that time, oh, you know, like especially in the summertime, you really want to, you know, have some water. We weren't allowed to drink any water. The only thing we really do, uh, put it in our mouth and swish it out or get the water and put it on the back of our necks. And that's the way we were taught. And with the grand opening with Mr. Castrano, like with like Grandmaster Shin was there. And we were so gun ho like it was 110%. We wanted to put, you know, 110% that we messed up. You know, we were so mad at ourselves. <laughs> it was just like, ugh. But uh, that's one thing, uh, you know, but so we just want to impress Grandmaster Shin so much. And things that we did, like, you know, some of the, like, break and I did with the, the cinder slab with my wrist thing, it never worked. <laughs> but I was so mad, but because I, you know, Grandmaster Shin was there. And, you know, it's just like, I guess, you know, stuff, my ego, I guess, but I just want to imp impress them so much, you know, and just, you know, be proud of uh, Mr. Costron, because I was always taught when I was in camp that you're only as good as your instructors. So that's, that's what I was always taught. And that, that's your father instructor and everything. So, so one, one other thing, like with Mr. Costron at school and uh, with everything else and with Grandmaster Shin, I remember Grandmaster Shin said, you know, like, uh, the downfall of a world tank so practitioner is their ego. And uh, I always believe that. And a lot of people, you know, some people have egos and sometimes, you know, it's, it's not that great because everyone, uh, you know, so I try to tell my students, like do a hundred, always do a hundred percent, no matter what, in the mindset, just a hundred percent, no matter what. And if you, that's all, you know, that's the, that's the least you can do is hundred percent. And if you do a hundred percent, all you, uh, you know, when you're doing, some people will be looking at you and saying, and saying like, hey, look at this person, look at that person. You don't even have to brag about yourself. People will start talking, you know, hey, look at this, this is very impressive. Oh, I wanna see how he does this and all this. And that's really important that just do 100%, don't worry about like if people are looking at you because you can be negative too, you know, like people look at you being, you know, not putting 100% effort. So you always want to pretend that you're always on camera, no matter what, you know, like hundred percent, like your life's on, your, when you train, even though, you know, there's not many people there, your life's on stage. You want to, this is how I believe, you know, that's how I was taught that hundred percent, no matter what. So. It's a great message, sir. And I think that especially right now, uh, it's a message that a lot of people need to hear because, you know, People don't want to train because it's hard to do it over video and things like that. But, you know, just, just train, just practice. Like, you know, yep. it, it doesn't matter. Even if you're by yourself, just do it <laughs> and try hard yes. regardless. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's, I really, it's like hundred percent mindset and that's, that's all, you know, and it's tough. It really is tough to us. Self-control, indomitable spirit, hundred yeah. percent indomitable spirit. That's it. <laughs> so. Got a couple of other people saying hi. Uh, George Berardi from uh, Region Nine. Oh, hey, how you doing, sir? Yeah. Um, Master Hutchinson says you are oh. awesome. Thanks for your inspiration. Uh. He says I know you always give one hundred percent. We got uh, Jovel from uh, Costa Rica saying Tung Su. Uh, Tung Su, Tung Su. Yeah. He, he, uh, Master Ma Master Hutchinson, I was down there, in Florida, and you know I got to know him. Other than like at the master's clinic, you know, he plays the bagpipes. Right. I, you know, he was, he, I mean, he's really good at it. It's real good. But I met and talked to him 
and he's a really good person. He really, my heart, he has, you know, it's like a lot of people, I always, like he has his, he wears his master's belt in his heart, not around his waist. He's a, he's a, you know, unity and brotherhood. He definitely is. So I just wanted to just tell everyone about that. that he's a great guy. He really is. I, I learned a lot from him. He's very humble too. So. I, I agree. I, I got a chance to do one of these with him a couple weeks ago. And um, that, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot and, and uh, I really enjoyed my, my time with him. Yeah, it was and amazing. I, <laughs> I want to no, get down there and train with him and, and get, one of, get one of our t-shirts on his yeah. wall. Yeah, <laughs> no, he's really good. It's so funny because when I went down there, his uh, uh, Mr. Brown, I think it's uh, his student, he's a carpenter, I guess, and, but he's a really good guy also. And he made like, what, 200, 150 nunchucks, you know, homemade nunchucks and everything. It was really, really neat. Then he gave me a pair of nunchucks. I forget what kind of wood it is, but it, it does, you know, like the termites don't need it. Like it'll be there forever. I forget what it's called. I, I forget, but uh, it's real, real nice, so. Well, uh, that's a great segue. Um, so nunchucks, let's we'll talk about weapons in general. But uh, if someone has trained with you, they obviously know that you're, you're very proficient in nunchucks. Can you tell us wh when, did you, when did you pick up the nunchuck and, and how did you decide that that was going to be one of your things that you really focused on? It was uh, like probably like in 1971 when I was in Kempo. My instructor, Greg Gibbons, also like the big thing was uh, Bruce Lee movies. And then he would do the nunchucks and everything. I thought, oh man, this is neat. It goes really fast and everything. So it was neat because uh, I start, you know, I bought a pair of nunchucks. And uh, then all I really knew for uh, probably like around three years was a figure eight. And then like, you know, going from one side to the other side. And that's all because no one really knew that many techniques and everything. So like, you know, that's all I did. And when I did the nunchucks, I would go with my parents' house while I was living there. And of course, Italian, my, you know, it was like they had a big giant mirror in the living room and I put music on and I would do the nunchucks with the music. It gave me like, like a rhythm, not that I could dance well, I can't, but it's just with the nunchucks. And I would just, the whole time I, I would do the nunchucks and, you know, it's, it was neat because uh, I really wasn't thinking about, oh, you know, it goes over here or over there. I just did it. And that was really neat the whole time I, I you know, with music. And that was so, because I, I wasn't, I wasn't ever tired because I was listening to the music. I really liked the music. I mean, like my, my favorite music, <laughs> the artists were Jim Croce and uh, and uh, Cat Stevens. That's what I, I always did it with. So it was neat. So I really liked that. And uh, then all of a sudden I saw people uh, breaking uh, boards with nunchucks. Like, oh, this is really neat. And so, you know, I started breaking the boards and stuff like that. And uh, it was neat. And then uh, I start seeing like the nunchucks, they have the two strings on them. And so I'm like, how did they do this? So I, I opened up an experiment and like saw what they, how they did it. And so I did it with two strings and I decided, hey, if you do it with two strings, you do it with four strings. And I started stringing them with four strings. And that's, you know, what I did and it was pretty neat. So, and the really important thing about that was what I was told when I was in the, at the you know, Kempo and Tracy's Karate was, you know, because if someone would get a knife and cut the strings and all of a sudden you would have just, you know, you wouldn't do the nunchucks right. And, uh, so figured like, oh, you know, four strings, if they cut two strings or even three strings, you still have the, the nunchucks, you'll be able to use them. So, and very, I was, uh, I looked at when you buy the nunchucks at the, you know, like Asian world or whatever it is, they have the nunchucks and it's two strings, but you, you should see how they, I open them up and you won't believe how dangerous it is. It really is because all they do is like maybe wax on the ends of it and you go real fast and they could fly and because they go like, approximately 90 miles an hour and stuff like that. So it could hurt somebody, but wouldn't once. <laughs> so. Did you ever see that happen? No, no, I never did. Go ahead. No. I saw other things that happened with the, with the, <laughs> someone put a, a, the apple on the person's head. Oh. And it hit the guy, even though he had the, the, the uh, head, head gear on, it was like pretty bad, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> It's yeah, I, you hear the stories of some of the things people did for demonstrations back in the day, like kicking cigarettes uh, out of people's mouths. Oh, yeah. oh, good. I'm glad you said that. Oh, my goodness. That's what we would do with the Quans. I have, I don't know if you can see this well, because I have one that's smaller someplace. But Quan, uh, Master Quan, uh, 
Kwan, Young Kyuk Kwan, he did the demonstrations and you had it. If he says, Dennis, come here, do this, do this, right? So, sure. So I have a picture of him. If you're going to see this, I have an apple on my head and I have a cigarette in my mouth. And from there, I had to stay there. And what he did, you see him doing, he's going to do a wheel kick and try to hit the apple off my head. And then after that, do a crescent kick, get the cigarette out of my mouth. But he, it didn't work very well. And then all of a sudden, the apple rolled down the side of my head and it hit the apple. And I got all the apple sap all over my head. But, but I couldn't say anything. But that, that, that's this picture. It's, it's so funny. So. Wow, that is that. That's a cool picture. <laughs> you probably you could probably feel your head just looking uh, at that picture. But you couldn't say anything. You didn't. I mean, he was really very very strict, which was good. You know, he rubbed off on us. But you know, it's <laughs> it really good. Oh, another picture too. I just want to show you with the nunchucks. I have these pictures too. This is we did this in Chester. This lady I don't even know. She took a picture of us doing a demonstration in Chester. There was a Miss Casarano holding the board and this other person's another student, Paul Levesque, he's holding the board. And it's really neat because there's like two boards, like boom, boom, you know, and it broke the boards. And it was really neat. I never knew the person. All of a sudden they gave it to uh, Mr. Castrana, the lady. And it was, that was so neat. So, that was cool. So I uh, wanted to think that I want to have all these pictures. I, I just wanted to show you one. This picture, I think it's really neat too. This is, I, did I show you this picture? Yeah, I did show you this picture. Or did I? Did I, show you? I don't I don't think I think I saw that picture on Facebook when I was when I was going through uh, stuff. Maybe okay. was that from Master Castrano School? Yeah, this, yeah, Master Castrano School. Yeah, when when the grand opening was over, like then he had this these people over. It was really neat. So a lot of people. Al, Aldwin Ali, I think it is. He's from I think he's from Australia. He's uh. uh he's from right Holland. Master Lee. I think I, I'm trying to. Uh, it's hard to see, I guess, but. So that was really neat. I like that picture. So. Cool. So, yes. Um, again, you you provided me a, a, a great segue. I saw you in the picture doing your doing a split. Um, jo Jovell asked if you have some recommendations on um, stretching. No oh, stretching. <laughs> yeah, um, I got something here. I like the. I know. I just said I have all this stuff here literature when i go uh no, great. You, brought, you brought props i appreciate it <laughs> when i when i do demonstrations i like you know i do uh clinics i guess you could call it i have i always give these out it's out and it's like my theory on stretching and if you want to like i don't know if you ever saw it before but there's three reasons for stretching the first is flexibility of course the second is for balance and the third is for building up your muscles like isometrics and uh, there's three ways, it's different ways. It's three, uh, with isometrics, building up your muscles. When you do a half a side split, then you go to the other side. You're building, when you switch, you build up your muscles when you're, even while you're stretching. It's, to me, that's, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I, I don't know, but it's from trial and error for me. There are three ways to stretch. The first way is the normal way. When you're in class and everyone goes, do this, you know, side split, front split, you know, grab your foot. That's the first way everyone stretches. The second way is wall stretching. It eliminates your balance so you can concentrate on your flexibility. You go against the wall, lean against the wall and do half a side split or do a you know, front split, lean your shoulder against the wall or whatever. So you eliminate your balance. You don't have to worry about your balance. So you can concentrate 100% on your stretching. And the third way of stretching is partner stretching. Okay, you can concentrate on maximum flexibility and isometrics because you can tell your partner, push me harder, harder, or not enough, you know, more or less. So that's the thing. You just take it. Just close your eyes and whatever and relax and everything. And then the mental exercises, okay? Is the first one, you must believe that your legs can support your body weight. And that is so important because a lot of people say, oh, my, my legs can't. Yes, they can. Your legs can support your body weight, no matter what. You believe in it, it will. If you don't believe it, you won't. You know, you won't believe it. You must believe that you'll be able to do splits, not today, but in the near future. You have to believe that and you can eventually. One thing I do when I first started, like uh, when I had students, you know, I would videotape them and see them do a side split. Then six months later, I videotape them again and they can see how they improved. And it's, it's mentally good for them. They you know, hey, yeah, I am improving, even though it doesn't feel like I'm improving. Okay. And then the third thing for mental exercises, you must have a positive attitude with no excuses. 
Okay, if you say I can't do splits and don't try, you'll never do splits. A lot of people go, oh, I, I can't do splits, I'm too old. Yeah, right, you know, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm sort of old too, but uh, I do that. And uh, people go, I don't, I can't do splits because I lift weights too much. I lift all my body, all my muscles, are, you know, my legs and I have muscle, you know, like all this stuff. And what I tell them is all these, you know, ladies, you know, all of a sudden they, 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 they do exercise or they're, you know, they have six pack stomachs, the ladies and men, to, uh, but the ladies especially. So what happens when they become pregnant? What, what happened to that six pack? You know, really. So the, the, that, that's, that's an example that it doesn't matter if you lift weights or not, you can do it. And that's the truth. It's uh, just an excuse. That's, that's what I believe in anyway. And the physical part too, you, uh, this is what I always try to tell people too. It's so important, real simple stuff. And you're only cheating yourself if you don't do it this way. You must keep your knees straight. Do not bend your knees no matter what. You know, like grab your legs or whatever. Don't bend your knees. Oh, I could do it bend my knees. So what? You're wasting your time and it turns into a bad habit. Second thing for physical, you must keep your back straight at all times. If you don't, you will be stretching your lower back and that will cause pain in your lower back. So you always have to keep your back straight. You don't know, like a lot of times when you do a size split or you're just on the ground and try to touch your, you know, your head to the, the floor in the middle, you don't want to touch your head because you try that, you're, lowering, you're stretching your lower back. You want to get your stomach to touch the ground, not your head. That's really important. And then, of course, three, you must put 100% effort every time you stretch. So 100% effort, it's like, oh, I don't feel good. Like I always tell people, like in the wintertime, it's really hard to stretch because you, you need to, you need to you know, warm your body up. Okay, that's important. And then before you stretch, and there's no, uh, before you stretch, you must you know, uh, warm your body up. I usually do jumping jacks, usually like 100 jumping jacks when I do it. You all of a sudden start feeling the sweat, and then you start stretching. So that's my theory on stretching. So, I mean, I said, I'm not a doctor. I don't know, but the way I did it, like I said it, I never really got hurt really stretching so yeah again I, you especially at the end we talk about warming up i always tell people that warming up is is, is very important when it comes yeah. to especially if you're going to stretch your big you know your large muscles you got to warm your body up um and you got to do it because a lot of people think you know the stretch once a week they're going to get they're going to you know, be more flexible and it's just like your karate skill mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta stretch it. You gotta stretch to be able to increase your flexibility. So yes, and then stretching is great because uh, we're uh, tax to do is high kicks. That's why you see the person doing a flying side kick. And if you can't touch, you know, kick someone's head, you know, you know that's the whole idea with tax to do is kicking, you know, high. One of uh, let's see, I just wanted to show this. I have pictures here. So, but this picture is I'm doing a side split on a chair. Okay, it was, this is a master class. No, this is my school long time ago, I'm from here. So, if you can see that. Yeah. So, and also I, I know bragging about it, like you know, uh, Master Oaks, you know, at the world tournament, he uh, he stood on my back kind of thing. And like, I, I just wanted to bring that because I had that, you know, so this one too. But that's that's the whole thing. I wanted to uh, show that, not that I'm trying to brag, but I just went, hey, I did this, you know, because it's all up here. It's all mental, you know. If you say I can't do it, be negative. I can't do that. You won't be able to do it. So, so that that's it. <laughs> um, Yoshi Oda sent a, uh, a question about a memory of Grandmaster Shin, and I'm going to kind of segue back. You just showed a picture of the World Championships. I'm assuming were you at the first World Championships? Oh yeah, when Phil yeah was at the Civic Center in Philadelphia. I was there. It was really nice. I. Uh, I, I took, uh, I think it was uh, informed. I, I think I took first place. I'm not sure, but it was really neat, you know, in my division and everything like that. The world, yeah, uh, where was it? World convention, the world tournament. Yeah, 1986, I guess it was. Wow. And that was in the Civic Center, yeah. Yeah, it was really nice. It was, uh, a lot of things happened there. It's like, it's like, sort of like with the political stuff. All of a sudden, all the Korean people, I don't know if you know that or whatever, yes. they decided to skip, skip town at the day of the tournament. So, you know, that, so Grandmaster Shin was all by himself, except for us, you know, so it was pr pretty neat. So it was pretty successful, but it lasted like, uh, was it like till 12 at night, the, the tournament. So it was a little unorganized in the way compared to now, now it's great, you know, but there it was like, it was, it was really neat though. But like, you know, 12 o'clock at night or after 12 really at the Civic Center, so. 
Did you ever get an opportunity to, to travel with Grandmaster Shin? Uh, yeah, I, not far, not, not like far away, but like, you know, different places. And uh, one thing was really neat, uh, I really, uh, not really, but it was, it's, I just loved it so much. After instructor's class, uh, we, uh, you know, we'd have like a, you know, dinner, but we, had, we went to the show in the King of Prussia and it was pouring rain out and I'm walking and all of a sudden I get, someone's honking to me and it was Grandmaster Shin and, and his wife. And he go, come on, Dennis, you get in the car. You know, like, oh, I mean, to me, that, that meant so much to me. Cause like, I'm a, you know, he, he, like he's an eye, my idol, you know, Grandmaster Shin. And he just, come on, come on. You know, like I'm gonna get his car wet. But you know, he just told me to come in, you know, and stuff like that it was real, real nice. Really, you know, I always, always remember little things like that that really mean a lot to, to me anyway. I know it means a lot to people and you know it's sincere. So, but uh, I really forget if I, uh, I'm not sure. I, I really forget. I, nothing that's comes. Okay. That, 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 that's a great memory. And, and like you said, just those little things uh, stick with you and stay with you. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, it didn't seem like much, but you know, it, that was a great, it was a great gesture. Yes. Uh, one other thing too, I'd like to say with uh, Master Williamson from Arizona, I went there with him. He's the greatest guy in the world. I mean, I know him, but also we, we drove, I guess from wherever you, Arizona, I forget where it was, to Utah or whatever. And, you know, you know it took a few, you know, an, a few hours and we were talking. He's such a nice guy. I never knew, you know, all these people are actually nice. I mean, like, you know, I don't know. You hear things <laughs> about them. But firsthand information is so important. And right. to me, he's, he's such a warm-hearted person to also. And I didn't know that, but he was a student of Grandmaster, uh, excuse me, a student of uh, Master Britt's. Mm -hmm. So I never knew that. And then we talked to Master Britt and we went over Master Britt's house, like last year, when, you know, so it was really nice too. So I just want to let, you know, Mr. Williams and you know, I appreciate him too and everything. And of course, Alaska too, with the Gepharts and they're, they're great people too, they're really good. And Nancy Allen, when we had the classes at the, at the Fairbanks, we would go to her house. Her, she has three cabins in the woods. And the only way you get to the cabins is by plane or by boat. That's the only way you go. There's no streets or anything like that. So we had, you know, so we did the clinics there. You know, it's really neat. So Nancy Allen, she so needs. So it's really neat people like that. So it's great. Do you, do you have any any memories of, of Master Chambliss and Master Britt from from back in the like the seventies and eighties? Oh, yeah, Master uh, this well, Master Britt, like he's he was a great guy. I mean, he's great. He's still a great guy. And uh, you know, he would uh, one time he used to do the uh, with the master thing. He would uh, try to okay, just like a leadership class. I guess I don't know what it was, but he would have classes at the you know the black uh, master's clinic. And teach him like you got to be this way, this way. And I, all, you know, I offered to help him, and he really appreciate that. I helped him, you know. I, I said, I'll help you, you know, and stuff like that. So that was really, really nice. Master Britt's a really great guy. He really was. Just want to let you know, he really is. And, and Master Chambers, Master Chambers is my hero. I tell everyone that he's like the person I never, you know, like he was the best in stretching that I ever saw. Because when he would do stretching, like he would I'd take, you know, the class. Any place, you know, I would do stretching, but he would do all stretching too. And all of a sudden he would put his, grab his uh, leg and put his foot behind the back of his neck. And oh. like, I mean, I, I, I could come up to here, but I come there and the same other leg. It's like, oh my, like, he just amazed me. Like, you know, this flexibility he had. And so he's my hero in the in flexibility. And really, and then plus sparring, it's not, you know, he was, he's, you know, it's good, good boxing. And, uh, you know, he did the boxing thing at the Black Belt Clinic in Elizabethtown University and everything. You know, he's, he's really, I really, he's a good guy. He's a really great guy. I really very much respect Master Chambers and Master Britt. So good memories. So. Yeah, that's, uh, our Master Godwin shares the same uh, sentiment where he just, you know, thinks the world of, of those guys. Yes. Yep, they're really neat. <laughs> so. When I was going through pictures uh, on Facebook, I saw, was it last year or the year before you went to uh, Latin America? Yes, mm -hmm. the last year, yes. 
you know, was there with, uh, you know, and uh, Grandmaster Bodwin and the Grandmaster you know, Strong was there also. And there was a, the master's clinic there and everything. And the people there are so, so nice. And uh, it's funny because I said, oh, I'm going to go there because I, I love steak, you know, beef. <laughs> and they, all they have is beef there, you know, and stuff like that. And so I went there and uh, I think Master Lorenzo's house or, or something like that. And uh, they had like two or three barbecues out in the back. And like there's a bunch of people there, you know, like a lot of, you know, from World Tanks, you know. And they had all this kind of steak and everything like that. And, you know, it was real, real good. And everything so no the, the people there they have so much desire you know and it's real real neat they're and very humble a lot of them are humble so and so it, it's it was really good i made a lot of friends there also so they're really really nice so awesome yeah i th that's definitely a place i definitely want to do the latin american master's clinic uh one of these years <laughs> yeah it's nice it's different very different <laughs> but it's, it's really neat really they're, they're really nice people. And it's so funny because they, they say like, uh, you know, don't, don't use your camera or your cell phone because <laughs> people take it from you. Like they're very, you know, so other than that, everything, you know, you know that. So, you know, but that's the thing was really different there. So. Uh, Tom, we're, we're wrapping up here, but I got, I got one more question from Tom Lyons. Um, you talked about training with Master Manelli and Master Vittori. Could you uh, share any any stories of training with those guys? Uh, I know it's funny. Master, Master Vittori, he, he was funny at the time when he had a lot of hair, you know, and stuff like that. Because all of a sudden, uh, it, it was funny because he would he would he's, he was very good. He had the, the techniques, but he would never sweat. For some reason, he wouldn't sweat. And like I'm a, I'm Italian, well, he's Italian too, and I would just drench in sweat. And all of a sudden he goes, oh, look, I'm sweating. And then, oh, well, I said, why don't you put that in the container so you have a memory of you sweating. But, you know, he was, he was good, but he, you know, he, I don't know, that was just so funny with him because he, you know, he would never sweat. So, and then with Master Manelli, he's, he's so funny. He's like, he's like typical South Philly Italian. Him and his brother, they live with their, their mom in South Philly. And like, he's, he, you know, he's, but he was so, so great guy. And like, I tell people, Master, uh, Master Manelli, he's my bodyguard because I wouldn't want anyone to, I will, you know, really, he, he's, you know, I, I think I'm a little taller than he is, not very little, but, uh, you know, it's like, like, oh man, he is something else. He really is when he gets, <laughs> so, but he's a, no, he's a good guy. He helps me out. Like, he's just like Master Castrano. He just helps no matter what you do, he'll help you. And ever since Master Castrano died, uh, he, I, I see him a lot, so much more. All the years I knew Mr. Spinelli, I was never at his house. I've been at his house for at least 10 times now, you know, and everything like that. Everything was really like secretive with him. But now like me and him are, you know, and it's really nice. You can't, like I, now I live in Summers Point, New Jersey, and he comes to my house all the time. We, you know, go to lunch, you know, stuff like that. So he's a really, really nice guy. Very, he, he big heart, Mr. Spinelli. And but it's, I wouldn't want to get on the bad side of him, <laughs> but, but he's a good guy. He really is. He's great. So yeah, he 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 uh, he'll teach you how to spar really well. You know, he's a good spar too. So, but that's that was uh, like Master Fatori. He's he's funny. He really he was you know, eh. and uh, Master Manelli. So, yeah, I, I Master Manelli is one of those guys. If you don't know him, he can be kind of in, intimidating. I remember at Black Belt Camp one year, I was I was walking, and he just just walks by me and starts talking to me and chatting to me. I was like. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, he's cutting jokes and 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 you know, making fun of people and laughing. And it, it it was it was it was nice to see that side of him. Um, yeah, I never really got to see. I I heard that Master Calzarano was a big joker. Um, oh God! Yeah, around. I never got to see that side. I always got the side at Black Belt Camp where he was yelling and screaming at us. Yeah, he um, was. <laughs> Master Calzarano, he was a big. Oh, we did well. I'll, I'll, we I don't know. We were there at the Black Belt Clinic, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> it was uh, it was so funny. It was a it was a conspiracy. Me, Master Casarano, and Master uh, Britt. We had did this thing, and we took I think third place. But I guess the bong show never happened again. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was pretty funny. But yeah, so awesome. Well, we got about a couple. We have a couple minutes left. Is there was there anything else you wanted to to talk about or touch base on? Yeah, what I wanted to, uh, really, I just want to tell you, like, now, now I'm, I'm training at uh, 
Devine Small Short, you know, Ms. Heidi Devine, she's, she's, she's really the best. I mean, this is her school here and like I'm doing this and she's so, she definitely has her uh, black belt in her heart. That's one thing about her. She really, she really dedicated person. And I really, you know, I'm really proud to belong to her school now, you know, cause you know, it was real, real nice, real neat. So and her, and her, and her leaders or uh, teachers, you know, instructors are just the same way too. Very nice. So I just want to let, thank you, thank her for letting me use this and for training here too, so. Yes. Big shout out to Heidi for helping us out and coordinating this. Um, no, really appreciate that. <laughs> Cause I know <laughs> technology is not, not your favorite thing. <laughs> Oh no! I was I, I we were talking. I can't do this. I do computers, but it's always trial and error. So if I was doing this computer, I would I, I would panic. So I wouldn't know how to do this. <laughs> so, <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. Again, thank you, thank you, Heidi. I know you're you're hanging around the dojang somewhere. We really appreciate you uh, helping us out. And uh, again, sir, thank you so much for for taking the time and spending the hour with me. I, uh, I really enjoyed hearing your stories and, um, you know, getting a chance to catch up. So oh, yeah, thank, thank, thank you for having me too. This is great. And I, this is really neat. Like put this in like the library memories. That's really, this is great. It really is. So I just want to let you know about that. Yeah. Thank you. I, like I said, I, through years of just wanting to hear stories from, from the masters that have, have come before me and for you, how many years have you been doing martial arts? 40 years, right, almost 40 years. Since 1971. So that's a pretty long time. Yeah, almost 50 years. So, um, you know, the, the, mem the memory, you've probably forgotten more memories than I've made as far as my martial arts journey goes. So <laughs> um, yes. being able to be able to, to, to save some of those on, on video is, is, is also uh -huh. important. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And, and uh, as I said before, I'm going to give you a copy of that Children of Tanks, you know, I told you. Oh, yeah. That. Awesome. I'm going to. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. Tung Su. Tung Su. Okay.